See, don't forget, you're in a prophetic church, right? Come on, you're in a prophetic church. What happens in prophetic churches is God will bring us together to prophesy, to declare, to praise him about what he's doing in the earth because he wants to have heaven affect the earth, right? So when we all come together, no matter how many of us come together here, no matter who's watching online tonight, there may be more people online tonight than there, than there are out here, but he brings us together, and when we worship like that, we're proclaiming what God is doing in the earth at this time. And, and uh, as we begin to come in agreement and as we begin to um, feel his presence just envelop this place, and as we begin to respond to what the Holy Spirit is doing, we become that glory portal, that gateway for heaven, that, that uh, mouthpiece for heaven to affect the earth. And God has always told us this about freedom destiny, even when we were in the other location, that he uses us in a mighty way to shift atmospheres. And so as, as uh, the worship set was chosen tonight, I didn't, I didn't know what was chosen, but it just happened to match my message tonight. Imagine that. Imagine that. My message tonight is heavenly shaking. Heavenly shaking because the Lord spoke to me that he's shaking off things in 2017 so that we can step into what we need to step into individually and corporately in 2018. And when I mean corporately, I just don't mean just freedom destiny, but corporately as in the body of Christ. And so what God is doing is he's tying up his own loose ends here in December and in your life and in the churches to prepare us for what he wants to do in 2018. And so there is a real heavenly shaking going on right now. How many of you all in the last 10 days have had radical shifts happen in your life? Come on. Or some of you just shy and not raising your hand or are you going like this? Radical shifting taking place where you, you're being asked to let go of some things in 2017. And you may not even know like the calendar time because your focus is so much on Christmas. But really it's at the end of our calendar year. It's not the end of God's, of God's calendar year, but it's the end of our calendar year. But he is getting us ready for 2018. And right now in the heavenly realms, he's shaking things. And he's shaking. And when we say shaking, it's like you take a branch from a tree. And, and the word shaking actually just means to wave back and forth, okay? So he's literally just waving back and forth, and he's seeing what's going to stay on it and what's going to fall off of it, all right? And so as he shakes like this, there's going to be some things that just naturally fall off. But in the shaking, fear comes. Have you, have you found yourself saying, God, I'm, I'm a little scared about that? God, I'm nervous about that. God, I'm afraid about that. And, and, and it's, a, it's a fear because in shaking, you're not sure what you're going to lose. You're not sure what's going to fall off because you thought you needed it. And now God's telling you that you don't really need it because it can't go with you into 2018. So as he begins to shake, a fear can come upon us. And in some cases, it's not even a bad fear. It's not even like I'm petrified and terrified. It's more of a reverence and an awe, knowing that God is doing something amazing. And as he's shaking, what is he getting ready to open up? What's on the other side of the shaking, God, that you're going to ask me to live by faith and step through that place? See, anytime he shakes, the outcome is that we're going to get a new resource a new, a, just a new resource is about to open and, a, and favor is about to come upon our life so that we can step into that new place. But at the moment of the shaking, we don't always realize that. We just feel the shaking happening. So know that you are in the middle of a, a move, something that, is God, that God is doing all over the place right now. He is literally shaking heaven and earth. Now, I love the fact that Roy gave the tithe and offering message tonight, and he talked about God speaking to Abraham about being a great nation. And, and originally, okay, and, and Roy took us to that place, Abraham and Sarah were too old to have children. 
And God came to them when they had no resource. There was no way in the earthly realm that a baby was going to be born to Abraham and Sarah. They were too far beyond in years. They had no resource. Okay, I'm talking to somebody. They had no resource. But it took the power of God to come upon the womb of Sarah in order for Isaac to be born and a whole nation to come about, right? And so oftentimes, God will come to us when there's absolutely no resource. See, part of the shaking is the fact that he's bringing us to a place where he's about ready to birth something new. And he's going to do it in a time where we feel like we absolutely have nothing. He's shaking so much, and we're saying, what, God, what are you doing? Now, when we look at the calendar, we think, oh, it's December 13th. Don't do this to me now, God, because I still have Christmas presents to buy. I still have some people that I got to get some stuff for. Don't be shaking my finances about right now. I just got a little uh, news flash over my, my uh, phone that said, the feds are going to increase the rates. All of a sudden, today, bingo, there's some shaking going on. All right? There's some shaking going on in the universe. God is choosing to shake some things. But hear me, people of God, when you think you have no resource is when God comes with his power, with his dunamis power. See, it's only in the dunamis, it's only in the supernatural that then something out of the ordinary can be birthed. Now let's talk about Luke chapter 1, verses 30 through 34, because I'm going to talk to you about how Mary was greeted by an angel. And in Luke chapter 1, verse 30, the angel said to her, you know, Mary, she's, she's found favor with God. She's, you know, just doing what she normally does. And all of a sudden, this angel shows up on the scene and says, don't be afraid, Mary, you found favor with God. In other words, that's why me, angel, is standing here. She says, the angel says, you will conceive and give birth to his son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. And Mary says, how will this be since I am a virgin? In other words, I ain't got no resource, and I ain't even married. I, I mean, you're coming to somebody who got zero, God. She ain't got no seed. She ain't got no resource. Yet, what does the Lord say to her? The, through the angel, the angel says, but the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Come on, I'm talking to somebody. Do you feel it? Do you feel it? So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. So what happens is the Holy Spirit comes upon her and the power of the Most High will overshadow her. And then the angel proceeds to tell her something prophetic. So she really knows, listen, I wasn't going crazy. I was meted by the angel. Because then the angel says in verse 36, even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. Elizabeth and Zechariah with no resource. Another couple that cannot produce anything. What? These are, here's three people, two couples and a single who's about ready to be married, and none of them have a resource. But each one of them are about to birth something that is going to literally transform the earth and bring the kingdom of heaven to operate right here. Every single one of those people is going to be who God uses their, their physical bodies, their emotional states, their mind, will, and their emotions are going to use everything to bring forth something absolutely amazing that is going to transform the universe. I say a shaking is going on. Look at your neighbor and say a shaking is going on. So the angel says, listen, Elizabeth's old and, and she's supposed to conceive in her sixth month. And then the angel says, for no word from God will ever fail. Whew. And that is supposed to bring us comfort. No word from God will ever fail. Now, the word doesn't say that when God speaks the word that we won't doubt that it'll fail. No, no, the word didn't say that. The word says that no word from God will ever fail. 
So Mary then responds humbly, I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. And then the angel fleed. Now, there's a shaking going on. Woo. Listen, in these scriptures, when the Holy Spirit comes upon her, it means the Holy Spirit superimposes her. It means that that word power, so the Holy Spirit overshadows her or superimposes her, comes upon her, and then the power, which is miraculous power and abundancy, dunamis power, that's firecracker power, comes on her to produce a child without a seed. Now, that's without an earthly seed. That's not without a heavenly seed. Okay? Heavenly seeds birth the kingdom of heaven on earth. The Holy Spirit conceived that baby inside an earthly vessel, a vessel of no resource, but what was planted on the inside of her was something heavenly. You know, when you become born again, you're dead on the inside. You got zero resource. And when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the inside of you comes alive with heaven's power. Same kind of thing that happened to Mary. Now, when the overshadowing happens, that word actually means in the Greek, a haze of brilliance. A haze of brilliance to invest with preternatural influence, which means supernatural influence. There's a haze of brilliance that invests with it supernatural influence. Now, look to your neighbor and say, the God of yesterday is the God of today. He's the same God that is working supernatural miracles in the earth today. And when the shaking is going on right now, it don't matter what the banks say. Listen, I don't read the earthly times. I read the heavenly times. Come on. I have my little subscription, and it's to the heavenly times, not the earthly times. I decided to cancel my subscription to the earthly times when I became a citizen of heaven. Come on, I don't pay them nothing anymore. They don't get me a dollar. Okay, earthly time subscription is done. Heavenly time subscription, I'm reading that thing every day. Every day, every day. And the Holy Bible is a culmination of every heavenly times written down from the beginning to the end right there. That's all you got to check into is with that subscription, and you'll be doing really good. Heaven's still talking and talking through the Word of God. Ha, no, no limited. No limited data plan. We're talking unlimited. Sister Iana, she brought it. Did she not bring it on Sunday? If you didn't see that one, watch the video. But you know what? We all, I had to laugh about it because um, while she's talking about the unlimited plan and how we got to get on the unlimited plan and not the limited plan when it comes to our finances, right behind her on our screen is, you know, ties and offerings, text 77977. Text FD Church to 77977. By the way, you all watching, you can text that number if you want to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can give online. It's okay. Give online. Okay. But behind her, it said standard text message rates apply. If you're on the unlimited plan, then you don't have to worry about no standard text message rates. It's going to cost you to sew in this house if you're not on the unlimited plan. If you're on the limited plan, you got to pay some money to give us a seed. Come on. Isn't that funny? And nobody's laughing but me. Am I the only comic in this house? All right, whatever. All right, I thought it was funny. That's how my head works. Okay, so back to heavenly shaking. So here we go. So we have Abraham and Sarah with no resource. We got Elizabeth and Zechariah and got no resource. We got Mary... And she ain't got no resource. But the Holy Spirit comes and invades all their lives. For what purpose? To make them rich? No. To invade the earth, to change the earth, so that we, his people, could come to know the king. 
and to live in the realm of the kingdom of heaven on earth. See, they were God's agents. He just chose them. They just had favor to be the people that God was going to make a deposit through. I'm talking to somebody tonight who's in this house that God is making a valuable deposit through you, and you are out of resources. But God is saying to you, guess what? You're the one I chose with favor, and I plan on bringing forth something that's going to benefit the kingdom of heaven on earth. Look to your neighbor and say, that's me. She's talking about me. That's right. Come on. You got it. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about you. All right. Oh, here's some more word. So let's go to Haggai chapter 2. All right. So as God's speaking to me about how he's doing this shaking on earth, this is prophetic shaking, okay, this is going on everywhere. He begins to share with me Haggai chapter 2. And here in this scripture, the prophet is proclaiming a shaking that is going to change things. Now listen to this. In the seventh month, in the one and twentieth day of the month, came the word of the Lord by the prophet Haggai, saying, Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, and to the residue of the people. Are we the residue? I don't know. That don't sound so good. I don't even know what. But we residue. And to the residue of the people, saying, Who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory? Now, y'all from Freedom Destiny, I want you to listen to me. Who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory? Come on, who's left? Who's left? All right. And how do you see it now? Is it not in your eyes in comparison of it as nothing? You can decide how you want to compare. All right? Comparison is in the eyes of the beholder. We all compare however we choose to compare, right? Okay, so compare. Compare whatever you think. But in this case, Zerubbabel, or Haggai, was speaking uh, to Zerubbabel, and he said, listen, you may have compared it now in the present to nothing, He says, but yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, saith the Lord, and be strong, O Joshua, son of Josedek, the high priest, and be strong, O ye people of the land, saith the Lord, and work. For I am with you, saith the Lord of hosts. According to the word that I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt, so my spirit remaineth among you, fear ye not. For thus says the Lord of hosts, yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts, and the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, says the Lord of hosts. Amen. So what is God saying to us? He's saying he's shaking the heavens and the earth right now. We know that's a prophetic thing, right? Now listen to specifically what he says. No matter what you thought was before, I'm shaking things now. I'm shaking the heavens. I'm shaking the earth, the sea, and the dry land, and the nations. For what reason? I'm shaking to fill with my glory. He says, listen, I'm shaking to get rid of the things that cannot hold the glory of the Lord. You see, what was isn't what going to be what is, and you've been asking for the glory of the Lord, so I have to shake off what my glory is not going to be able to stay within or around. i got to shake it off. It's not for this time. It's not for this season. In other words, where you may have had no resource... As I shake the heavens and the earth, those things or the lack thereof of those things are going away so that I can bring in my glory in a fresh outpouring, a brand new way. And then he says this. He says, here's where the resource is. See, notice this. When there's a shaking the resource is about, about to come. Look, it happened with Abraham and Sarah. It happened with Mary. It happened with, um, who are the other two? Come on, help me out. Elizabeth and Zechariah happened with them. 
when there is no resource, but the shaking comes, then what happens? In verse 8, the silver is mine and the gold is mine, saith the Lord. In other words, where there was no resource, and now I'm shaking it, and now I'm telling you, the silver's mine, the gold is mine, the glory is mine, it's coming in to this place. It's not only coming into this place, it's coming into this place. It's coming into you and what it is that God wants to do in and around you. See, he can't give you extra resource until he eliminates or gets rid of anything that's going to prevent the new resource from coming in and making a difference. And any resource that he gives you is a resource for the kingdom. It's not a resource for yourself. See, you got to be all kind of shaken so that you don't try and hold on to what God's resource is. Does anybody understand what I'm saying? See, God got to shake you real good. God's got to come to you when you ain't got nothing so that he knows you're somebody that can hold on to what it is that he gives you and be able to use it properly and not for yourself because you already lived without it. So therefore, you don't have a need for it. Come on, I'm talking to somebody. Does this make sense? Who does God pick? He picks the humble. He picks the ones with no resource. He picks the people that he had. That, look, he picked the Egyptians. They were in bondage for 400 years. He picks the less than, less than the nobodies, the ones that are at the bottom of the barrel. And he says, come on, you ain't nothing. I'm going to raise you up. Right? Because he knows that when he chooses those kinds of people, when they raise, they're going to raise with the humility to be able to handle kingdom resources the way that God wants kingdom resources to be handled. Come on, Zechariah and Elizabeth, they didn't get any proud just because they had John the Baptist. And guess what? Their son lost his head. There's a cost. Mary. Born the son of God, yet her son had to die on a cross. How many of our sons will have to die on a cross? God help us, none. I don't want no persecution come to my son. Mm -mm, he had to get through she mama before that happens. You know what I'm talking about. The point of the matter is you have value and you who has nothing has great value because you are the ones that God wants to raise up. You're the ones who have been training, planning, studying, preparing, seeking God in the middle of the night. The ones who have nothing are the ones that are willing to stay up in the middle of the night and hear from God and do what God tells them to do because they so daggone desperate that only a word from God is going to make a difference to them. There's a blessing in having nothing. There is. Come on, go to Costa Rica. Go to Haiti. Go to different parts of the world. Man, those people see supernatural things happen just on faith. They don't have nothing. We live in comfortable country club Christianity. The other day I had this revelation from God. It just struck me so bad. All of a sudden, it just hit me. I saw some income. And it was going to pay for things that make us comfortable in the church. I'm not just talking about Freedom Destiny Church. I'm talking about the church overall, okay? So, so I was watching income, all right? And I was thinking to myself, God, if all of this was gone, if all of this was gone and we had no money, and every moment that we collected a dollar, all we did was give it away to somebody that needed it. And I thought, you know, missionaries come and go. We send people on mission trips. We all collect our money together to do the best thing that we can for our one-week trip. But we, as a people and as a culture in the United States and Europe, wealthy countries, Australia, have developed a concept of church that requires us to have all of this in order to be happy. Yet it costs an awful lot to have all of this. A tremendous amount to have all of this. A huge cost to sit in that chair. A huge cost to have the light on. A huge cost to have online television. A huge cost 
that everybody else in, in other desolate parts of the world does not have to pay, and all they're looking for is the word of God. But I'll tell you what, we strip all this stuff away, and nobody's coming to church at Freedom Destiny. You hear what I'm saying? And I'm not just talking about Freedom Destiny. I'll talk about every church in this town and every other town all over the world that is like us. We do this because this is how we have determined that church should be. But this is not church according to God. Church according to God is people who gather together, break bread together, speak the word together, bring, hold on to one, in, one another, help one another in every way that they can, and they have nothing except for God and the word of God. But we've established that this is church. And if you're going to have church in the United States, this is how you have to have it. This is it. Unless there's an absolute overwhelming revolt and we all determine that we're going to turn ch tables and chairs upside down, we're going to sell everything. But I'll tell you what, we do something like that, we're going to lose all y'all. Because not everybody else in town is going to do that. They're not going to do it. So when y'all get tired of sitting on the floor, you're going to go somewhere else where they decided not to sell the chair. Now, now, this is nobody's fault, okay? I'm not saying, this is a culture that was raised up, and we determined that church was this way, and all of us became church planners. I'm talking about myself, Pastor Adam, there's a whole slew of us out there that plant churches, and we know what can keep people to a certain place, and we can develop an environment and a culture. This is a culture. Freedom Destiny has its own culture. Our culture looks different than other cultures. You go to other churches, their culture looks different. But everywhere, there's a platform, and there's some chairs. And there's some cameras. And there's some other stuff. And you got coffee. Because if you ain't got coffee, then you're not as cool as the next guy who got coffee. Come on, you know what I'm saying. But I don't believe that's how God does. You got to have music. Yep. And you got to have it loud enough with the guitars and the piano. Right. Now, listen, I'm a sucker for all that, too. Y'all know me. I'm like a pseudo rock star. I, like, hide behind my son. Yeah, go, buddy, you know. Yeah, I'm totally pseudo rock star here. I love it louder than anybody, okay? Me and Pastor Adam, we love it. We came out of the 80s rock era. I think it's cool that you can sing to God and still rock, okay? I'm all for it. But the rock on, but the fact it rock on heaven, right? Stand on the rock, the rock of Jesus Christ. We can rock all we want in this place. But the bottom line is we've developed a culture that even church planners can't escape. If you choose to do church in the United States of America, Europe, Australia, abroad in a wealthy country, this is what you're going to get. You can't, you, we can't break it now. we all gone too far. But I don't believe in my heart that God intended it to be this way from the beginning. That it grew in a cultural environment and atmosphere and people fed it. And it got to a certain point. Now, his spirit is here. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not deno taking away any of that. He is in this house. He has come to inhabit where his people are. But he's going to inhabit us in a manger or he's going to inhabit us in a palace. It don't matter. It doesn't matter. And cultures all around the world, even from the beginning of time, I mean, look at the Egyptians. They had to build things that were greater than anything else. Look at the Tower of Babel. How great can we make it? But the fact of the matter is, he was born in a manger. He was a little box with some hay. And that was how heaven on earth came. I'm going to close down now if the band wants to come up. And, I, and listen, you know, I just threw all that at the end because I just had this rev. It's like all of a sudden the Lord took a stick and went, Poof. and I was like, oh, my God. And I'm like, it, it, it's this way because of what people have created it to be. It's a creation, right? It's not that it's a wrong creation. It's just an expensive creation. It's expensive creation. There's a lot of people that need what the expenses are that create this kind of environment. And it works in wealthy cultures, it doesn't, it doesn't worry. The gospel's preached all over the place at no cost. All you got to do is be a person that shows up somewhere, you the gospel, you know, it didn't cost you nothing. But I think we need to think about the fact that as God shakes the heavens and the earth, 
As God's shaking, and he's shaking now, right now. So when you leave this place tonight, I want you to look around. And I want you to think about all the shaking that's going on in your own life. And I want you to wake up, take some inventory. What's he shaking off? What's he shaking? What is he saying? You you ain't taking that to 2018. And I want my spirit to birth something new in and around you. The supernatural is going to come where you have no resource. Because I, God, am going to use you in a mighty way. And I want there to be nothing, so I'm going to shake it down to all that's left is what I choose to want to deposit into in that moment. And this is a good thing, folks. This is a really good thing. Because anytime God does something new, it means there's a fresh outpouring, there's a new wind. And and we're going to sing that song tonight. I want to close. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you need to know Jesus. He was born in a manger, came on earth to die for our sins. He was buried and he was resurrected. And when we believe in him, we die with him. We're buried in him and we are resurrected in him. We are resurrected to be brand new creatures inside his dunamis power. Bingo, out of your no resource, life is produced. And you then become a kingdom citizen doing an earthly assignment. If that's you in this place tonight, we want to know you. We're going to have altar team members up here come up and let us pray with you. All you have to do is confess that you're a sinner. We're all sinners. Every sin, Romans 3.23, all of us have fallen short of the glory of God. We are all sinners. We need a Savior, and He's it. He's the only one, and He came. And we celebrate His birth this month. Believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. You just say it, and the Word says, Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, you will be saved. So just do that, and then we want to know. We want to know you, or we will pray with you. If you're here tonight for a healing, you want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, whatever your situation is, we will have prayer partners, prayer warriors, warriors up here to pray with you.